Alright folks, today is going to be a bit of a rough day for me. I think I caught a little bit of a cold from my kids. I do have some uh, cold medicine that's hopefully going to help me get through the day. Uh, so if I sound a little raspy at times, or if my voice cracks, or something goes crazy, you guys know what's up. Um, I am taking cold medicine, trying to keep it under control so I can continue to make content for you guys. Plus, today's a big day because we have a Nintendo Direct later today, which I plan to be live streaming during. Uh, so you can enjoy that direct with me, have a conversation with me as it's going on, and then I plan to record a Nintendo Prime Reacts to it immediately after, just in case we don't record a podcast this week. So it's going to be a long and interesting day, and obviously if there's any big breaking news, um, I'll probably do an individual video for that as well. But today could be a jam-packed day. You could end up seeing five or six videos today, and I hope you guys can forgive me. But... This morning, we're going to start with the Nintendo Switch Online app. So if you remember, one of my biggest criticisms of the Nintendo Switch Online app dealt with the voice chat. Specifically, it dealt with the fact that it was really inconvenient to use the voice chat because in a lot of situations, the voice chat would just stop working. And those situations included basically doing any other functionality on your phone. Well, today, the Nintendo Switch Online app has been updated here is what the update allows voice chat will now continue when other apps are opened voice chat will now continue during sleep mode improved support for bluetooth devices they fix some bugs and they do note that on devices using android 6.0 or later voice chat cannot be used during sleep mode while power saving features are activated to use voice chat during sleep mode, go to other settings in this app and then select power saving settings and deactivate battery optimization for this app. So yeah, Nintendo fixed one of the major issues with voice chat on phones. And that is the fact that you couldn't do anything else on your phone and voice chat. Uh, so that's definitely a big improvement. And I have to applaud Nintendo in this case for listening to their consumer base because a lot of us, a lot of us talking heads, a lot of fans, a lot of reactions were, man, voice chat on this app is basically useless uh, if you have to keep the app open at all times. Uh, and there were people who even did battery tests on their phones while just running the app and they would literally watch their phone die after like less than an hour of voice chat. It was just, it wasn't a good situation. And obviously the app uses quite a bit of juice. The fact that it can't do this while in power save mode uh sucks but again you can go disable it put it in sleep mode and have your screen off and you know whatever like any other voice app for the most part although discord works well in power save mode so i, I and maybe there's some more improvements there at least on the android side that nintendo can do because it doesn't say anything about uh the iphone's power save mode and not being able to use it them so maybe they just need to do some more work but nintendo's listening and that's important because nintendo doesn't always listen to their consumers uh we there's so many examples of nintendo not listening uh but it feels like more than ever in 2017 nintendo kind of gets it i mean Think about how many people were asking for a Metroid 2 remake, and I know there was all this controversy over when Nintendo shut down AM2R, but it turns out that they had, you know, Metroid 2 Samus Returns in the works that whole time anyways. So they were already going to do that. People thought Metroid was dead, and then they come out and say, hey, we're going to have Metroid Prime 4. I mean, think about that. It's just crazy. Uh, everyone thought Nintendo was done after Wii U and even a hybrid concept. People couldn't wrap their minds around how it could be popular. And Nintendo did it with the Switch. And everyone thought motion controls were dead. But Nintendo found a way to bring them back in an intuitive but not forceful manner where if developers want to use some motion controls, they can, but they don't have to. And it doesn't seem to hamper the experience of playing video games uh, through a completely normal button controller setup. It's just, Nintendo, it, it seems to be understanding uh, the target consumers they want to go after. They are starting to understand gamers better, and they are starting to listen to our feedback to make improvements. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things they haven't answered or haven't had any feedback for yet, such as where the heck is Virtual Console? Uh, why the heck can't we have 
uh, multimedia applications on the Switch. It's a tablet. It would be really nice to watch Netflix and Hulu. It would be really nice to browse the internet, use Amazon Prime. Uh, heck, you know, you could argue maybe the App Store should be opened up for other applications. You know, maybe maybe being able to download the Amazon app so it's easier to make purchases right directly through my Switch. Uh, there's a lot of intricacies I guess involved in that. In fact, I would love if I could draw, like I use DirecTV now currently. I would love if I can download um, DirecTV now or any other TV streaming application, be it Sling TV or, I mean, this might be ironic, but even PlayStation Vu, uh, be able to download those apps and watch live TV on my Switch. And I know some people are like, well, why would you do that? Well, why does anyone watch things on their phone or watch things on other tablets while they're in their house because it's convenient. You know, like me, I'm not feeling the greatest today. So if I go to lay down on the couch or I go to lay down in my bed and I don't really want a giant TV, like I don't have a giant TV in my room, it's a 32 inch, but if I don't want that much light blasting down at me and I just kind of want to lay a certain way and just throw on something, the switch is kind of convenient because I can set it on my nightstand, it has a kickstand built in, and then I can still use my phone and other things while the switch plays a movie for me or something. Yeah, I don't know. Just just kind of brainstorming here. But still, there is issues uh, with voice chat that obviously are not resolved on the app yet. As an example, you can only voice chat uh, with people in a lobby in Splatoon 2. You cannot call your friends, you know, have one-on-one -on -one voice chats through the app. Uh, you can't create lobbies outside of games. Uh, there's no cross game chat yet. So like you can't create a lobby with your friends, talk to your friends and just be everyone playing completely different games. It's still game specific chat right now. Hopefully that's something that changes once they launch their paid subscription next year, but I wouldn't necessarily rely on that. Uh, we don't know what Nintendo's plans are. Obviously there's still drawbacks to having voice chat on, you know, on your phone uh, I still prefer it locally. We've learned that the Switch is actually capable of doing it locally because there's a certain specific mode in Splatoon 2 through LAN mode uh, playing some multiplayer stuff that actually allows local voice chat. So it's really weird. Like, So the Switch has the capabilities, but they're still pushing it. I don't know. Maybe Nintendo plans to have the app just be an option uh, and eventually have local voice chat. We have no idea what Nintendo's thinking. Uh, and we might never know because... Uh, maybe the fact that that works is actually a bug and Nintendo never patched it out. Maybe it's leftover code. I, Who knows? But uh, I'm pretty excited about the fact that Nintendo's at least making you know incremental improvements to the application. I think all of us thought that these improvements, these specific ones, uh, would be addressed about you know making sure the app is usable when you're using other things on your phone because... That was obviously a major deterrent from even attempting to use the application is like i can't answer a text message i can't go browse the internet quick i can't uh, check facebook i can't do this i can't do that uh, there was a lot of you know holdups to using a voice chat app that has to basically take over your entire device so uh, kudos to you, Nintendo. Thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully you continue to listen because I think there's a lot more improvements you can make to that application uh, to make me have a lot less criticisms of it. I, you'll never be able to get rid of the stigma that I want local voice chat, but at least if you're going to do it on the phone, you can make it the best version possible. Make it more convenient than Discord, please. And uh, I think... This is at least a step in the right direction. We'll see if, if that continues to happen. Anyways, folks, as I said, it's going to be a long day today. I think I'm going to might have one more video going up before the live stream later today. Uh, but again, I'll be streaming the Nintendo Direct. You can watch it right here on Nintendo Prime. You won't have to go anywhere else. And uh, you can watch me uh, kind of live react to it and then watch a, a reaction video later where I plan to bring in some other YouTubers. So, yeah. If you like this video, folks, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.